Hello guys and welcome to today's video and uh, today's video is going to be a bit different than what I usually upload because I managed to get a new world record in the Nitro Tracks category of a you know the market speedruns and I haven't done speedruns in a while but um, I kind of got into it again yesterday. I did a 48 track speedrun just for fun. And during that run, I ended up getting a new world record in the first 16 tracks of the run. Unfortunately, the run kind of died afterwards. But, um, you know, we can talk about that later. I did get a new world record in the first 16 tracks though. And I figured because I didn't, you know, commentate it while I was playing, I'm going to give you some post commentary um, with a face cam once again and just talk about the run itself what went well, what went wrong, um, what kind of speedruns I'm gonna do in the future, and um, you know, talk about some of the videos I'm gonna upload very soon, because I have a few things planned, but more on that later. As you can see, I'm using Pink Yoshi with the Teddy Buggy. Um, it's my go-to combo for speedruns. I'm not sure if it's the best, but it's what I'm most comfortable with. And um, as you can see, it was in a 48 track speed run. So, you know, my splits are, you know, for all 48 tracks, but the only tracks that are gonna be interesting are the first 16 tracks today. The first track is Marcat Stadium, and we are already on lap three, so time goes by really quick. But, um, you know, so far, this, uh, this race is pretty good. I managed to pull off all of the shortcuts. I got all of the coins, so this is a pretty good first split here. And um, if I remember correctly, I'm actually tied with uh, my PB here. Yeah, 0.0, .0 difference. And um, not sure if you guys noticed, but I'm not using an auto splitter anymore. For the longest time, I had an auto splitter set up. That would also calculate, you know, in-game time for me. But um, it broke for some reason. It doesn't work for me anymore. And I'm admittedly too lazy to fix it. So I just split manually now. Maybe I will fix it one day. But um, yeah, no IGT for this run, unfortunately, but it is a real-time world record, so that's pretty good. And uh, the next track is Water Park. It is a very difficult one, a very tricky one, because of the stairs in the beginning. Um, from what I know, it's pretty much random how much air you get um, after you drive over the stairs. And if you get a lot of air, you lose a lot of time. So, you know, that kind of sucks. Let's see how well I do it here in lap 2. That was acceptable it was pretty bad but at least not catastrophic and um, yeah I've, i'm planning on doing more speedruns in the future especially 48 track speedruns um but also the booster courses as you may may not know i've been practicing the booster tracks a bit um in recent times but i kind of took a break for a bit during my sns rainbow road grind but um, once I'm done with that, that was a really good uh, stair section my way. Once I'm done with that, I will focus more on the booster tracks again, as well as um, Project 48. Um, some of you may remember it. It's where I try to get Y tops on every single track in a game, in 200 CC, um, at least for the base game. So, um, yeah, gotta go back to that and practice the booster courses. And I am 0 0.3 seconds ahead of Water Park. Uh, after water park and um, that's pretty surprising because the mushroom cup in my PB is really really good The world record is a 641.1 if I remember correctly So it's only 1.1 seconds behind world record for which is pretty good I think that's the most optimized single cup world record um, there is at least from the ones I've tried getting and um, you know, my PB is only 1.1 seconds behind the world record in this run, and I'm already ahead. So, you know, maybe I can get close to it. Um, it mainly comes down to Form Bruins. Form Bruins is like a D1 track in Mushroom Cup that can make or break your run. Because, um, you know, some of the reasons I will talk about later, but to break it down, it is pretty random. The beginning shortcut is very annoying to do well. The trick out of the water section is very annoying. Um, but we can cover that in more detail once I get there. Sweet Sweet Canyon is a pretty easy track for the most part. The only thing that can trick you up a little bit is the um, ending shortcut thingy. Um, the part that's coming up right here after the turn where you drive over the off-road. So I, I take the left path and I drive over the off-road there without a hop because if you hop it is possible that you get so much air time that um, you know you make a big jump and you cannot control it and you land in the off-road patch afterwards, you have no control of your vehicle and it's really bad if that happens. So I just don't hop at all and hope that I just kind of get carried over the off-road without losing speed. 
And most of the time it works out, but sometimes it doesn't, and I get stuck in the off-road and I lose quite a bit of time. We will see what happens in lap 3. Of course it did happen, uh, which is why I even mentioned it in the first place. Um, yes, if you don't um, do that part perfectly, you just get stuck in the off-road and lose time. It's, it's super annoying. It did happen in lap 3 here, but it didn't lose too much time, only like half a second. And I'm actually behind going into Form Bruins, but I can save over a second here. So technically, I can still get the Mushroom Cup World Record in this run if I get a gold split on Form Bruins. But getting a gold on this track is very, very frustrating, very annoying to grind out. This shortcut was pretty good, but ideally you wouldn't lose any time um, if you time it perfectly. Um, but that wasn't the case here. And by far the most annoying part of this track is the one that's coming up here, the trick out of the water section. Normally you can just trick on a ramp, it never works for me, I have no idea why, I have no idea what I'm doing wrong, but it just doesn't work. And I go for a little gens or glider here, without the motion, of course, because you can't pass in a speedrun. And um, yeah, that was decent, I guess. So I messed up the shortcut there, so it can't be world record anymore, with how bad that was. Um, sorry about that. Um, but yeah... This, this really wasn't the greatest race, admittedly. It was pretty bad. Um, I go for one last Genzo. It worked out. And, oh wait, there's one more lap. I'm dumb. Um, I get a perfect shortcut there, which um, is always nice to see. Um, but I didn't make the cycle there. Normally, if you're fast enough, you can go ahead of the um, stone wheel on the ground. But I didn't get it there. Once again, missed the trick. And I just finish off this race. But... Apart from the one or two mistakes, this race was decent. Um, I did get all of the um, glider strats and I ended up saving 0.3 seconds. So this was a 641.8 Mushroom Cup, which again is 0.7 seconds behind the world record. Which is pretty good considering I didn't really go for the world record here. I just played the Mushroom Cup for the speedrun. So, you know, that's decent. And the track that's coming up next, Mario Circuit, is one of the um, easier ones, perhaps the easiest track in the speedrun. Um, because there's not really much that can go wrong, the, the worst thing that can happen is that you like, miss a corner or two, which is what happened here, but in the end that doesn't lose too much time. Um, maybe if you're unlucky you can get screwed over by the bridge here, but uh, in my run it seemed to all work out. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to talk about a few things. As you may have noticed, I've not uploaded that much recently um, for multiple reasons. Um, I'm not going to get into it too much, but um, I am working on videos. Um, so, you know, you got this video right here. Um, I am also working on the SNS Rainbow Road world record um, very actively. So, you know, if you want to support me during the grind, make sure to check out the Twitch. Um, but, um, you know, once I get that world record, I will post that to YouTube as well. And that's kind of my main focus when it comes to Mario Kart right now, just getting this world record. So, you know, I haven't really done anything else Mario Kart related other than SNS Rainbow Road and the speedrun, I guess. Um, but yeah, I'm working on that. And I have a normal video coming out very soon as well, um, which is a Race to Clock video. A lot of you guys have been wanting to see a new episode of Race to Clock. And um, I did make one. It's gonna drop very soon. Um, I'm not gonna say the track yet, but it is a track a lot of you guys will enjoy, I'm pretty sure. Um, it's a pretty cool one. So, um, yeah, hope you're looking forward to that. It should drop very soon. And, um, yeah, that's what I got planned at the moment. Um, Mario Circuit is done. As I said, one of the easier tracks. I saved a little bit of time. But Toad Harbor, in contrast, is one of the most difficult ones. Um, this beginning right here can be super annoying. If you don't time your hop well, you can get slowed down and maybe not make that ramp strat. But it ended up working out in this run. Um, so that was great. But you have to do the same thing in lap 2 and 3 unless you go for safe strats. Which, if I remember correctly, I did go for in this run. Um, ideally, you will get three coins there. I messed it up a little bit. Didn't get the third coin and bonked the wall. But um, all things considered, it doesn't lose too much time. You can get the backup coin right afterwards. And, you know, the little bonk, it loses a bit, but it's not the end of the world. And I do go for safe strats. I, I go for the SMT over the grass, which um, you, you don't have to do. You can empty hop over it and go for the ramp, which is what I do most of the time. But in this run, I kind of focus on doing more consistent strats for the most part. 
um, because I haven't done a 48 track speed run in so long and I was kind of unsure how good I would be, how consistent I would be, so I figured instead of going for all of these super annoying, you know, um, precise strats, I'm gonna play it a bit safer in most parts and try to just finish a run, which I did do in this attempt here, but it wasn't a 48 track speed run world record, it was only a 16 track world record. Um, we can talk about the other splits um, later on, but um, you know, Toad Harbor, as I said, was one of the more difficult tracks, but it seems like it went pretty well. I go for the ending shortcut, and I put it off almost perfectly. So, you know, it's it's a bit of a risky strat to go for, and because if you don't do it well, you can lose a bit of time, which is why I only do it in lap 3, where you get the finish line right afterwards, so, you know, you don't lose as much. But I did it pretty well, so, you know, that was dope. Saved some time. I'm now tied with my best pace ever, which is cool. And my best pace ever, by the way, is the Nitro Track world record. Um, in the splits I'm going up against, and um, my Nitro track time is a 29 21.8 and that is not the world record the world record is a 29 12.1 i would say uh let me check that real quick while we are rec oh no it's a 29 11.1 my bad a 29 11.1 is the previous world record so it's 10.7 seconds ahead of the splits i'm going up against so for this run to be a nitro track world record i would have to be 10.8 seconds ahead um, after 16 tracks, so that's the goal here right now. I'm only 1.2 seconds ahead But um, I have a few tracks where I can save some time mainly Bowser's castle That's the main track where my PB lost a ton of time But you know until we get there we got a few other things to worry about twisted mansion is a decent track that glider strat right there is super annoying especially in lap 2 because of the boost they're in your way you can't fly as well as you would want to and I did mess it up a little bit there, but you know, it wasn't too dramatic, so it's still fine, most things considered. And um, now after um, this track and the track afterwards, we're already halfway done with the speedrun. And so far, there weren't any major mistakes in this run. Sure, there were some minor slip-ups, no doubt. But um, there was nothing major, like I didn't burn out, I didn't fall off, I didn't have some super unfortunate mishap. Um, I went all decently well, so... No, that's always great. And um, the Nitro Track world record that I had prior to this um, is probably one of my best world records um, in all of speedrunning that I've set. Um, it was a pretty consistent, a pretty good run. So um, I didn't really expect to beat it, like ever. Um, but I somehow did in this run, so that's great. And um, yeah, Shanghai Falls is the next track. Um, a fairly consistent one, I would say. Um, my PB ended up, or not the PB, the run I'm going up against, um, lost almost three seconds on this track. And admittedly, I don't remember why I lost that much time. It's been forever since I've driven that run. But, um, you know, somehow I can save three seconds here, which is great. Um, again, this doesn't mean I save three seconds on a Nitro Track World Record. This means I save three seconds on the run I'm racing against. Um, which is the 48 track world record and uh, maybe you've noticed um, the world record time I have at the bottom of my splits is a 124.17 uh, 124 124.17.0 um, and the world record on speedrun.com is a 124.19 I think so um, the, the speedrun.com world record is a bit outdated I guess um, but I, I didn't record this run, at least I wasn't able to find the footage for it. I'm not sure if I did record it, but the footage seems to be lost, so I have no way of uploading the actual 48 track world record, which I'm running up against. I only have to split um, to, you know, judge my time off of. I know it's not fake, but I can't prove it, so it doesn't count. Um, which is unfortunate, but it's only a small world record anyway. And I forgot I actually messed up the ending of Shiger Falls a little bit. I didn't get air at the shortcut, so that was a bit unfortunate, but I only lost 0 0.6 seconds, so it's not too bad. And I'm now 3.2 seconds ahead going into the second half of this 16-track um, speedrun. And um, again, I wasn't really going for Nitro Track World Record at this point. I was just, you know, comparing to the 48 Track World Record time, and I was pretty happy to be ahead. Um, just for some context, this was my maybe second run or third run after even coming back to speedrunning. I haven't done a proper 48 Track speedrun in forever. 
and um, you know I was pretty rusty on most tracks I didn't remember where to go um, on some of the tracks um, for example on Bowser's Castle um, I forgot what kind of pace um, you know you have to deal with where you have to drive um, which path you have to take where the wrecking ball is I can talk more about that once we get there but I was in a call with Nino and some other people but um, Nino was the main one that was helping me during this run so shout out to him and he told me um, where to drive on some of the tracks so this run wouldn't have happened without him I probably would have messed up somewhere along the line um, but uh, yeah let's focus on Sunshine Airport first it's a very consistent and easy track one of the easier tracks in the speed run um, in time trials it can be a bit annoying with the motion glider and stuff and the precise ending strat here But in speedruns you don't have to deal with any of that You can just drive normally If you're not fast enough you can get pace locked here with the crates Which means you would have to go to the right of him But I feel pretty confident in going left there even without the, the CPU hitting the crate So you know, it all worked out there in the end And uh, we are approaching the end of this race as well and we will be entering Dolphin Shoals and Dolphin Shoals usually is one of the easier tracks as well but um, I haven't practiced it in a while so I didn't really know how to drive this track anymore as you will see in a second um, but I, I didn't realize but I got a gold split on Sunshine Airport that's pretty cool is that my first gold split of the run I don't remember but it's one of the first for sure um, by 0.1 seconds. I'm now five seconds ahead and again I need to be 10.8 seconds ahead to get a Nitro track world record So I still have some time that I have to save until then But um, yeah, maybe on Dolphin Shoals I can save some I ended up missing a coin um, It's not the end of the world, but it is a bit unfortunate nonetheless and um, As you will see I did not go for the glider strat in lap one nor lap two because I forgot that it's even a thing like in the middle of lap three I remembered that there's this glider strat where you do a drift off of the glider and stuff and um, you will see it later um, But I, I really forgot that that's even a thing so I didn't go for it in the first two laps That's some time that I could have saved because the strat isn't too difficult and it saves a good amount of time for free But uh, yeah, that's what I was talking about. I'm a bit rusty. I don't remember all of the strats so You know there's that um, as you can see, I didn't go for it in lap 2 either, but in lap 3 I did do it, so you can look forward to that. And um, other than that, Dolphin Shoals was pretty consistent, pretty good. Um, normally there's nothing to worry about on this track. Um, the most difficult part probably is getting all of the coins in lap 1. And I did end up missing one, but I got the backup coins, so it wasn't too big of a deal. And now... Pay close attention. I'm doing the um, glider strat right here. You UMT, then drift off of the ramp, trick off the glider, and it's a little bit faster, a bit harder as well, but I'm pretty consistent at it. And I ended up saving two and a half seconds on this track as well. I'm now tied again with my best pace ever, which is the Nitro Track World Record. That's the best way to compare it to the actual Nitro Track World Record, is to just look at my best pace ever at the bottom of my splits. And I'm perfectly tied with it, so. You know, I may be 7.5 seconds ahead here, but not against the actual Nitro Track World Record, which is what we care about here. And um, upcoming next, we have Electrodrome. And um, I have to say, I'm not a big fan of Electrodrome. It is a cool track in time trials because of the glider, Genzo Glider Strat at the end, which was discovered a while ago. Um, but you don't do that in, you know, speedruns, <laughs> especially not in um, no item speedruns, of course, because you don't have a mushroom. So. You can just do the normal boring strats um, and yeah that's what I do here. It's fairly consistent apart from the stairs in the beginning here. If you're unlucky you can get some air time and it sends you wide and you lose some time but I don't think it happened in this run so it's all good. And um, just for some context I didn't even realize I was on pace for Nitro Tracks World Record at this point because I knew okay I need to be roughly 11 seconds ahead. And I was only 7.5 seconds ahead with five and a half tracks left. So I thought there's no way I'm going to save this amount of time. What I didn't know during the run was how bad the Bowser's Castle was from the run I'm racing against. I think I can save like three or four seconds there. And if you do the math, that's already enough to get world record. So I didn't know that at the time, but I was on pace at this point. Um, which, you know, is pretty cool in hindsight, but I didn't know that then. 
And um, I'm finishing Electrodome here. Um, it's always important to get these, this ending mini turbo trick where it saves some good amount of time. I did get it there and I'm now 8.1 seconds ahead. I can consistently save like half a second on every track here or maybe even a second if you look at my best um, split um, at the bottom there. So that's great. But um, yeah, Mount Vario um, can be a bit tricky. I have big problems with the um, S3 beginning part where you do like these left and right turns. Um, I don't know the word for it, but um, I tend to mess it up quite a bit. Um, and we will see how it went in this run. I'm not going to spoil it. Um, what I do not have to spoil though is that I missed a coin. And missing coins is always unfortunate. I don't remember if there are any backup coins here. I don't think they are. So this is actually some decent time loss here and um, which of course isn't too great um, apart from that though it looks like a pretty good Mount Vario so far pulling off all of the strats like I have to and um, if you're not careful here you can't fall off at, at that section right there but I, I, I managed to pull it off which is good um, I take the upper path there I, I don't know if that's fast or not but that's just what I went for here and now we get the little no item shortcut it's always very satisfying to pull off it wasn't perfect but it was good enough and in this tree section I played safe you can go tight here and save some extra time but as I mentioned in the beginning of the run I tried to go for safe strats in this run for the most part and this is the section I was talking about here the part that I can't do and as you saw I messed it up a little bit hit a wall it wasn't the end of the world luckily it only lost a bit of time but you know it's still unfortunate nonetheless <laughs> You can see with the um, rear view spam, I wasn't too happy with that because I also missed one of the tricks on the mole section. But um, all things considered, it didn't lose too much time. And we finished Mount Vario um, with a 7.5 second lead. It looks like I lost 2 seconds on my gold split, which I honestly am a bit surprised off of. Like, I didn't know it loses that much time to mess up those things, but... I guess that's what it is. Um, I'm now 0 0.7 seconds behind the Nitro Tracks world record, so I have to make up some good amount of time on these last four tracks. And these are perhaps the most difficult ones in the entire Nitro Track section. Cloudtop Cruise, super annoying with the paces and stuff with the lightnings. Um, I messed up that strat right there pretty badly. Um, missing a coin in the process, so uh, already off to a terrible start on this track. But um, hopefully I can redeem myself later on. And after that we got Bone Dry Dunes, which um, is super tricky to play. Bowser's Castle, perhaps the most difficult track in, you know, the entire game in the speedrun, at least from my own experience. And Ramp Road, the finale, um, you know, can go wrong as well if you're not careful, but probably the easiest track of the Special Cup. But um, I guess let's focus first on Clots of Cruise and why it's so difficult. Um, you know, the, the tricks itself on this track are very hard to pull off. Like the beginning, super bounce and stuff are not that easy. Um, but you also have to worry about the pace here with the lightnings that are always striking down on the boost panels. If you're not driving perfectly and you mess up a little bit, then you're not going to be on the expected pace. And you will have to improvise a bit. Um, you know, knowing whether or not you can drive over certain boost panels without being struck by the lightning. So you have to be very aware of how fast you're going um, at what kind of pace the lightnings are going to be at. So you have to think a lot on this track. And because I messed up early on, I wasn't on the ideal pace. I had to improvise, but luckily everything went well. I didn't get hit by lightning. Um, was all fine. And I even got a high glider there in the end, which saved some time. So that's pretty good. Um, so apart from the lap one mess ups, I did finish this run, uh, this Cloud of Cruise run, um, fairly well. I did lose 0 0.9 seconds over um, the gold split, over um, my PB that I'm running against as well. But I did save some time on the Nitro Track World Record. As you saw, I was a decent bit behind after the, the last race, but now I'm 0 0.2 seconds ahead. So now I'm actually on pace on Nitro Track World Record, and um, which is surprising considering my Cloud of Cruise wasn't that great, but I guess my World Record did mess up quite a bit on that track. And we are on Bone Dry Dunes, and you already saw um, a little shortcut in the beginning. Um, it is quite difficult to pull off um, properly, because most of the time you, you know you can't time your hop optimally, and you lose some time, um, you know, because you get stuck in the off-road, which is definitely not what you want to happen. And if you're not careful, you can even jump too far to the right and land in the gap there in the, um, in the void. So, you know, falling off is like the worst thing that can happen. So you really want to avoid that and go a bit further to the left and play it safe. And it worked perfectly in this run. It wasn't like perfect, perfect, 
but it was a very very good beginning shortcut and it's the best I can hope for in a speedrun honestly and apart from that and um, the strike doesn't get much easier um, you can get some airtime there that turn and get sent wide and lose a lot of time didn't happen in this run luckily um, and I also go for the tight path at the split path section here. Um, it is a bit risky to do that. And I said I would go for safe strats in this run. But I've been practicing this strat a little bit in, you know, recent speedruns. So I'm trying to go for it in lap 2 and 3 every run, even though it's a bit risky. But um, it's just what I've been practicing. So, you know, I'm more used to that now. And, um, you know, I finished Bondra Dunes. Um, surprisingly enough, I lose some time here, even though it was a pretty good run. I guess my PB um, did get a faster beginning shortcut and some cleaner driving. Um, but, you know, I only lost 0.3 seconds over my gold split, and I'm only 0.1 seconds behind the Nitro Track World Record. So, all things considered, it's still fine. And uh, we are now approaching the last and uh, the second to last track of the speedrun, and the hardest one as well, Bowser's Castle. Um, and as you can see, I can save four and a half seconds over um, over the 48 track run that I'm racing against. So, um, you know, I can make up the time um, that I'm behind. And uh, this, this, this track is so difficult to drive. As I said, I had Nino telling me how to do certain sections, where to drive regarding the pace, because I didn't remember, admittedly. So, again, huge shout out to him. Without him, I wouldn't have been able to drive Bowser's Castle nearly as well as I did. Um, so that was great, um, and uh, if you play the strike well, it's all fine, but if you make just a little mistake, things are going to be awful for you, because, you know, it's very pace-reliant, similar to Clutch of Cruise, but, you know, three times as bad, because you got the waves um, to worry about, you got Bowser's Fist to worry about, you got the Wrecking Ball to worry about, you got these little lasers in the beginning to worry about, there are so many things that are, like, um, on, on like a certain pace, and if you mess up a little bit and you're not on the ideal pace anymore, you will have to improvise. And improvising on so many different things with the fire bars as well is very tough. So you have to pray that you do everything well, that you are on the ideal pace that you can practice easily. And um, just drive as you practice. But if you mess up once, good luck improvising. Because there's a good chance you're going to mess something up. In this run though, everything went well. And I am saving time. I got a gold split by half a second. I'm 0.4 seconds ahead of the Nitro Track World Record. And I only have one track left um, to get this final world record, which is Rainbow Road. A track I've tried and tried quite a lot in recent times. Some of you may know. Um, I, I, this is the last track I've played in um, Project 48. I'm trying to get World by Tops here. I'm 0.3 seconds off of World by Tops at the moment, I believe. So I still have some work left to do. But um, I have to admit, at this point, I started to realize that maybe this can actually be Nitro Tracks World Record. Because again, up until Bowser's Castle, I didn't know I have so much time saved left. So I didn't know I'm on pace. But now I knew. Now I knew that I only have to finish Rainbow Road. And I will get World Record. So I got a bit nervous. And you might be able to tell because my driving isn't the best. I, I do some weird strats here with, you know, the, 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 the Minitobo and stuff. It's not what you're supposed to do. I kind of improvised. Um, but as long as I don't fall off or burn out, it's all fine. Um, I might lose some time, but, you know, it's still okay as long as I keep the lead. I missed another trick there. As you can tell, I was pretty um, nervous at this point. But I only have one and a half laps left to drive. And then I can get this world record. So, you know, it's time to lock in here. Time to do the rest of the track well enough to not um, choke away the little lead I have. And again, just as a reminder, the previous world record is a 29.11.1. So I have to be um, quite a bit ahead here. Um, so yeah, let's hope I don't mess up the ending. I approached the fast glider. I, I don't think I got fast glider there, but it's not too bad. You know, we got a final shortcut left. Hopefully I don't mess it up. Looking good. Don't mess up the ending straight either. Don't go too tight. Don't fall off. And I don't, luckily. My ending time is a 29.10.4. A new world record by 0.7 seconds. Improving over the Nitro Tracks world record. 
And as I said, I did not expect to beat this world record anytime soon. So the fact that I was able to beat this was such a shock to me. I was I was super happy. And again, this was my first or second speed run after a pretty long break. So I was still rusty. So, you know, the fact that I got this made me super excited. I was like really happy to continue this run and maybe get a new world record. But, you know, as you can see on screen right now, unfortunately things didn't go too well. Um, I ended up being um, 13 seconds behind the 48 track world record um, with a 124.30 or I guess 11 seconds behind the speedrun.com world record. So I did show quite a bit, I'm not going to go into detail but I just didn't drive very well. So maybe I can beat it in the future but until then, thank you all for watching, appreciate you guys watching till the end. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so yet and leave a like. And with that being said, take care and goodbye.